this is uh, Mr. C, Mr. Corcoran, Coach Ben, here with another lesson. And today we are learning about winning materials. So today our target goal is to improve the evaluations in moves. And also our prior knowledge is the two holds attack. So when you look at these positions, there are always going to be two options. Look for both of the options, which is better, and also look at what your opponent could do. So in this position, and in all positions, before I tell you the moves, you, sh you can always pause as soon as you see the position and ask yourself, what is a better move? You can pause it, and you can take three to five minutes, and then try to solve it for yourself, and then play the rest of the video and see what the answer is. White must play the very important move. Knight takes e5. And uh, the reason why is because we have two pieces that can attack, but we know that this bishop can also hit our knight. So why not eliminate that threat by using our knight to attack, where if we took with the bishop first, this bishop can take our knight with check. Why not just eliminate that and just take with our knight first? Now, if they take our knight, we take back. And if you look at it, it's pretty even. We both have bishops. We both have two pawns. It should be a drawing game. In this position, go ahead and take a minute to pause and think of what is the best move. Is it knight takes e8 or rook takes e8? You are white. Okay, on pausing, and here we go. So, as you can see, knight taken there looks like a free piece, but after rook plays here, checking the king, rook has to play here, and he takes and is checkmate. Check and mate. We can't allow that. So, Seeing that offhand right away, that he can give us a check, we must take with the rook first. Check. And then once they take our rook, then we can take back. It's always, a, it's always good to look at both moves, look at both possibilities before you make a final decision. Don't just assume that taking with one piece is always good. You gotta always look for other threats that your opponents can make. In this diagram, black is not yet ready. Um, in this diagram, black is not yet really uh, making any threats. With queen to c1 is a threat, but it's not that big of a threat. Because with this threat right here, we do have our knight right here. Bishop could come here and threaten, but that's not going to be good because we can just take back. So it's not that much of a threat with queen check. White must bear in mind this queen check and capture on e4 in the correct way. Since we have two ways of capturing. But which is correct. Knight takes c4 is very fatal because we lose this protection right here. So taking here is just going to end the game right away and we lose. For example, knight takes here, queen c1, check, our queen stops, and mates. So why, that's why queen takes e4 is simpler and the easiest because we take and protect our queen. We are actually up a piece and we protect this important square right here in case if there's a check. Hmm. So if we look at this current position right now, it looks pretty similar to the previous one. We do have the queen and bishop hitting here for a free pawn. 
which is not much of a threat, but this threat here is very scary because there's nothing in the back rank. We do have a queen that comes right here to protect with the knight's defense. So we have to be very careful of which way to take the bishop. Also, if you look with this queen right here, we do have our queen lined up to that square too if our knight moves. So always use that little extra attack. Pretend your pieces that can do long ranges can see through. And if that piece moves, your piece can attack. So if that knight here actually moves, your white queen can protect that square. So the correct way of taking is knight to e4. Let's see what happens with queen takes e4. Loses very quickly with queen checks, knight blocks, queen takes, knight blocks, queen takes, and checks mate. That's why he doesn't... Well, doing that very quickly again. And that is checkmate. So the correct way of taking is knight to e4. Because our queen is protecting the a1 square. And there's no way black can stop us. Position number five. So here there are two possible ways of actually taking with black here. If you really look at it and you have to analyze, there are two ways as black to take the bishop. There's this bishop here that is actually hanging right now. And you have either the pawn or the knight to take. You have to really look at both ways and what does each capture do. So if I look at it, we know that our knight is protecting the other knight right now. And also, it's attacking this bishop. We also have this pawn attacking. But if we use our knight to take, knight takes c6, we actually end up losing our knight also. So it's just a trade and we're actually giving back material. And now it's almost an even game, but it's actually white that's slightly stronger with the rook. Going back here, if you would actually take back with the pawn instead, note that you're actually protecting your knight. And your knight and the knight's really protected by two pieces, and you have two knights versus a rook. So you can say, I have two pieces, and my opponent has one, which is actually more of an advantage for black. Even with the double pawns like this, I would think black is slightly better and can hold a draw, or even possibly somehow win. You never know. Okay, position number six. So if we look at this position, there are it's black to move, and we gotta see that there's two different ways of taking this position. So we can see that this bishop is pretty much free, and we can take either with the rook or the knight. Now let's take a look at this. What do you think? Pause your video and see which one you like better. So after pausing your video and looking at the position. We're going to see which one's better. You definitely have to see what is the pro and con of both, and is there any threats that you have to worry about. Well, if white had a free move right now, what would white do? And your answer would be rook comes right here and checks you from the back rank. So your top move should actually be something protecting the square. Well, your best move should be actually knight takes c6. Let's see what happens if you take with the rook instead. If you take with the rook instead, well, the other rook comes in and it's checkmate. You lose the game. You might have won a piece, but you lost the game. So actually by taking with the knight instead, you actually won material and gain a piece. And also protect that square which you can always even bring your rook back before advancing the knight somewhere else. 
Too many arrows. Okay, last position. Looking at this, it is black to move. And you have different choices of what to take. You got to be very careful of what you take here because it's not an easy calculation. You got to always look at all the threats. What are the threats? So, right now the threats that you might have, well, you can take the queen with check and win material, or you can take the rook. You have two different choices. What's the correct choice? Well, you have to look at what's the threat. What if white has a free move? Sometimes that's a good thing. Before you make your move, be like, okay, I want to make a move. I would love to win that queen. I could also win that rook. But what if white had a free move? What would they want to do? And by looking at this and analyzing, you might actually see, oh, I see the real threat of what white wants to do. Once you see white's real threat, you might actually want to eliminate that threat. And right now, looking at it, if white had a free move, rook comes here, checks the king, and the bishop actually protects it. And if you think about it, that would actually be checkmate. If white gets a move right now, it's checkmate, you're done. Game over. So white would love if you took the queen. Let's see what happens if you took the queen. You don't want to do this, but let's see what happens. Bishop takes b3 checks. Oh, you win the queen, but you lose the game. And after king goes to a1, no way of stopping this checkmate. No way. There's nothing you can do. This bishop here can even come here and try to stop, but he would be one move too late. This rook can move all the way over here, but it'll still be too late. It is checkmate on the next move. So, the best move is actually taking bishop taking h1. Now, you're up a rook, and you're not going to lose the game. And just have to play a little bit longer, you will eventually win the game. So congratulations, you have went through this course on winning material by looking at two folds attack, looking at two different ways of how to exchange, and always looking at the threats before you make your move. Make sure to see what your opponents are doing. So play through this position as or this whole lesson as many times as you want. This is a good lesson to review to help you get better at chess win material and eventually win the chess game and climb that rating points. So I will catch you next time.